Okay. Aloha, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Choi. I'm the Planning Program Manager at the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Um, and thank you for joining us this evening for the beneficiary consultation for the land use request from the Ko'olau Foundation uh, to utilize about 60 to 70 acres of Hawaiian homelands in Haiku Valley in the Ahu Pua'a of Heiia on the island of Oahu. Uh, with me tonight from the department, I have Perlene Pukuba, uh, the Oahu planner for the department, uh, Shelly Carrera from our land management division, and Stacy Lynn Eli um, from our office of the chair uh, joining us this evening. So mahalo everyone um, for joining us this evening. Um, let me real quickly go through um, some introductory housekeeping um, items. And then, um, so the purpose of tonight's meeting is to gather beneficiary mana'o on the Ko'olau Foundation's land use requests for the long-term use of approximately 60 to 70 acres of Hawaiian homeland trust lands in the Ko'olau Poko Moku on the island of Oahu. Um, just a general housekeeping um, items. Um, for when you are not um, speaking, please remember to um, keep yourself on mute. Um, this will help to eliminate background noise like your neighbor mowing the lawn or your dog barking. And it'll help to uh, help everyone hear the speaker um, a lot more clearly. Uh, type your questions in the chat or raise your virtual hand. Um, the facilitator will call on you then. Tonight, I'll, I will be facilitating the meeting. So I will um, either look for your uh, virtual raised hand or your real hand um, in the screen. Perlene will help uh, monitor the chat for me to make sure I don't miss anyone's comments in the chat. Um, again, this meeting is being recorded and we will be posting uh, the meeting recording on the department website, um, the same page that you folks used to access the Zoom meeting tonight is where we will be posting uh, the recording of this meeting. Um, while this is a virtual meeting, we do like to um, keep track of attendance and who participated in the consultation meeting. So um, I'm just gonna ask all participants in the meeting to sign into the chat with your first and last name, uh, where you live, the applicant, um, and whether you are a DHL applicant on the wait list or a DHL homestead lessee or other. Um, if you have multiple people um, on your computer at the same time, you can just type in um, both names and let us know um, whether you're a waitlist applicant, a lessee, or other. Um, Again, while this is a virtual meeting, uh, we do have meeting kuleana that we have at all of our uh, beneficiary consultation meetings to make sure that um, everyone uh, has a, a positive experience from the meeting. So uh, just to remind each other about, about our kuleana this evening, uh, please be respectful of the person talking and please do not interrupt the person who is talking. Um, everyone will have an opportunity to talk and we will um, try to make sure that you have um, a good opportunity to say what your mana'o is or ask, um, what, ask questions that you might have. Uh, please wait for the facilitator, me, to call on you um, before you ask your question. Or, or again, um, if you are like me, uh, a little bit shy, you can type your question into the chat and we will go over um, all of the questions and comments in the chat. Um, when addressing other participants, either verbally or in the uh, chat box, please be respectful, um, please show aloha and uh, treat others how you would like to be treated. Um, Again, this is a beneficiary consultation meeting, so please um, remember that we all are here um, and we might have different ideas, um, um, different views of things. So please remember that um, it's okay to agree to disagree and that um, others might have different perspectives and opinions than what you have. And that uh, let's have it in mind and um, have the mindset that we will be taking home new ideas or information tonight. So that goes for all the participants, including the department staff. Um, the department is required to hold beneficiary consultation meetings like the one we're having tonight on four, um, on four matters. One is statewide policy issues. Others are amendments to the department's land use designations. 
Um, the third is the development of these show plans, our island plans, our regional plans. And then lastly, uh, the long-term use of Hawaiian homelands for a non-homesteading use. So um, the Ko'olau Foundation's land use request is a proposed long-term use of Hawaiian homelands for non-homesteading uses. So tonight's agenda, um, we're almost done with the welcome and introductions. Um, after that, I will turn it over to the Ko'olau Foundation uh, for a quick presentation and overview of their land use request and why they are uh, requesting Hawaiian homelands uh, in this particular area. And then the next part of the meeting, uh, the um, part of the meeting that we will spend the most time on is uh, an opportunity for our beneficiaries um, joining us this evening to share their mana'o on the land use request. And then uh, lastly, um, before the night ends, uh, we will just wrap up and let everyone know what the uh, next steps are in this process. So this is the approximate um, project location. Uh, the DHHL has um, a tract of land in Haiku in Heiya. So that tract is um, highlighted in yellow. Uh, the Ko'olau Foundation is requesting a portion of that tract. So not the entire area within the yellow, but a portion. And they'll go over in more detail uh, what area that they are requesting from the department in their presentation. Okay, and then um, at this time, I will turn it over to um, the Ko'olau Foundation to give an overview of their land use request. Oh, I think you're on mute. Mahalo, Andrew. Okay. All right. Can everyone see that? Excellent. All right. Are we still clear on it? Are we good to go? Yeah, I can see the screen. We're good to go. Excellent. Okay. All right, whenever you're ready, Uncle, take it away. Aloha mai kako. I send to all of you our aloha and special mahalo to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands for naming our Ko'olau Foundation to present to you our background, history, and hopes for establishing a culture preserve here in Ko'olau Poko at Ha'iku in the uplands of Heia Ahupua'a. Our organization was actually formed back in the 1990s, but we were not registered as a community nonprofit until 2005. We are now a recognized 501c3 tax exempt organization. Our mission is to preserve Hawaiian culture by advocating for the preservation and protection of Hawaiian cultural and historic places and to perpetuate Hawaiian values practices, and mo'olelo. Our vision is to ensure the preservation of Hawaiian places of antiquity and history for generations to come. Most of our members are of Native Hawaiian ancestry, but our board is diverse and comprised of talented practitioners and professionals from all walks of life. Here you see our officers and board members and some of our key volunteers. We have 12 board members. Beside myself, Aaron Mahi, we have Teresa Bright, Leila Aloha Kaluhiva, Mahilani Seifer, Leilani Jones Tollefson, Alice Hewitt, Sanji Lopez, George Atta, Artis Eschenberg, Donna Akina, Jill Akana, and Francine Gora. Our key volunteers are the site manager, Keilani DeCosta and also volunteer coordinator Kayona, Kainoa Azama and Kupuna mentor, Uncle Saul Naluwa'i. I would like to introduce to you one of them, Kilani, to share with you some of our pre-contact history of Haiku Valley. Also presenting will be Mahelani and Kainoa. Kilani, take it away. Aloha kako. 
My name is Hi'ilani Vaidi Costa, and I am currently the site manager up in Haiku Valley with Ko'olau Foundation. Um, I should also know I am also Mahalani Cipher's Mo'opuna as well, too. Um, I'm here to share with you a brief pre-contact history of Haiku Valley. The Ili of Haiku was inhabited by Hawaiian families for generations. During the Bishop Museum's archaeological research at Luluku in the neighboring Ahupua of Kaneohe, they discovered evidence of residue with carbon samples dating back to the 5th century. And we might assume that our Kanaka Mali Pohiko also settled in the uplands of Heia around the same time. Our Kupa Aina families tell us that Haiku was once believed to function like a hospital or a source of medicine. The late Auntie, Le Auntie Caroline Bright informed us that Kahuna La'ala Pa'al traveled to Haiku to gather plants. They would mix these plants with others they gathered from the ocean to make medicine. Historian Samuel Kamakau also taught us that during the time of Chief Maili Pukahi, the chiefs and priests lived in the uplands in the back valleys throughout Oahu. The cultural complex of Haiku Valley includes at least three known heiau and a cultural gathering place in the Pico, such as Kane Hekili and Kane Amekanelo Kane Ame Kane Heiau Kalamai, which were directly touched by H3 Freeway. There was another heiau on the Kuhuku side of the valley and possibly a fourth in the Pico. I'm gonna sh share a little of, of the modern history of Haiku Valley in this 1900s. Many Hawaiian families lived in Haiku Valley up until the 1930s when they were relocated to other lands outside the valley. The US Navy had determined that the valley offered perfect conditions to build a top secret radio communication station that could send signals to aircraft, ships at sea and submarines to establish their coordinates and it was connected to six other Omega stations around the world. In the 1960s, the Navy transferred the station to the Coast Guard, who operated the facility until 1997 when it was decommissioned. From 1995 to 97, Ko'ala Foundation held community meetings to invite comment on how the valley could be used after the station closed. And much of this mana'o was included in, in our conceptual plan, which we'll be sharing later in the presentation. In 1998, Haiku was conveyed to the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. During that year, we met with Chair Kali Watson and discussed the possibility of a cultural preserve in the valley, which we felt was part of the department's kuleana. Yes, and tying into that layer of kuleana, one thing is the dual purpose of the Hawaiian Homelands Act, um, which is embedded in the purpose clause of the Hawaiian Homelands Act is um, direct reference to our culture as quoted here. The Congress of the United States and the state of Hawaii declare that the policy of this act is to enable Native Hawaiians to return to their lands in order to fully support self-sufficiency for Native Hawaiians and the self-determination of Native Hawaiians in the administration of this act and the preservation of the values, traditions, and culture of Native Hawaiians. Over the 25 years since that first meeting with Kali Watson, Koala Foundation met with several succeeding Hawaiian homes chairs. In the past eight years under Chair Ayla, we met at Haiku with him several times and were encouraged that he felt Ko'ala Foundation could apply for a lease or license to establish a culture preserve. We learned that an environmental study had been conducted in the valley to identify possible contamination from jet fuel and PCBs that were used during the time of military occupation. For this reason, according to the staff, development of the valley for homesteads was considered not feasible. In 2021, we submitted our formal application to Hawaiian homelands to use all or a part of the valley for the culture preserve. In March, 2023, we met with interim chair Ikaika Anderson who arranged for Hawaiian homeland staff to meet with us to prepare for the beneficiary consultation process, which is required before our application can be presented to the commission. Over the years, we have had on again, off again discussions with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs regarding Haiku Valley. From 2000 until 2017, Ko'ala Foundation participated on the Halava Luluku Interpretive Development Plan Working Group, convened to address mitigation measures for adverse impacts of H3 on Haiku Valley. To this day, that consultation has not been completed. During that time, OHA helped us by funding development of a conceptual plan for Haiku, which we will share with you later. In 2017, the OHA staff produced an ethno-historical study of Haiku Valley, documenting its history and mana'o of Hawaiian families who were kupa aina to the valley. Ko'ala Foundation has worked for years to establish a cultural preserve in Haiku, addressing 
the community's needs that came up during our meetings in the late 1990s. Here are some of our legislative efforts. In 2007, there was a concurrent resolution which was passed by the legislature to establish a, the cultural preserve in Haiku Valley, and at the time also Halava Valley. This idea won the support of the Oahu Council and the Association of Hawaiian Civic Clubs. In 2008, OHA included in its legislative package a bill to establish the Haiku Valley Culture Preserve and transfer the land from Hawaiian homelands to OHA. At the last minute, however, the bill was amended in conference committee to transfer Haiku to Department of Land and Natural Resources. Governor Lingo vetoed the bill, contending that DLNR did not have the funding to manage the property. In 2012, Representative Ken Ito, the state representative for Haiku, introduced another bill, again calling for establishment of the Culture Preserve. The bill cleared all hearings except for the final session before the House Finance Committee, which did not, al not allow it to move forward because that was a year when a fiscal crisis had hit the state and only bills that were urgent for health or safety would be passed. In 2023, Representative Lisa Kitagawa, the current Haiku area representative, introduced another bill to establish the, the preserve in Haiku. It passed the Water and Land Committee but could not move forward because OHA had not made a commitment to accept the land transfer. Yeah, so our Koala Foundation has witnessed, um, has been really working with um, volunteers to Malama the sites for many years. And during that time, we have witnessed um, a number of problems and challenges as well as experience such. Um, this includes um, trespassers, including vagrants, vandals, and others, hikers trying to access the haiku stairs, unrestrained introduction of invasive species, which have overtaken the valley, such as the albizia, um, the continuing damage to the loop road, which is the main access to the various heiau sites, severe vandalism in the large um, transmitter building and the maintenance building at Malka, as you can see, the transmitter buildings um, on the bottom left, um, which um, is very different compared to that slide that Hi'ilani shared. Um, no longer that beautiful, nice, um, intact facility, but so now looking like that. Um, and then other internal challenges, um, internal challenges that the Ko'ala Foundation has been facing is that we've had several funders over the years that have offered financial support um, for establishing the cultural preserve, um, but we currently lack um, the DHH, DHHL license um, or lease um, that has prevented um, their kokua and such. Yeah, mahalo nui. Cultural preserve goals. The main goals that the Kuala Foundation is pursuing in the Valley are establishing a cultural preserve, conversion of the Omega Transmitter Building into the Kuala Museum and Cultural Center, and turn the upper maintenance building into a cultural retreat, uh, development of a cultural and environmental educational program with the Ahu Pua'a as a living learning environment, <clears throat> and reestablishing native medicinal plants in a Hawaiian forest. We are applying for a conversion of this valley in three phases. One, two heiau Malka of Loop Road, Makai of H3, from Kane Amekanaloa heiau to the border water su supply boundary on the Kuhuku side of the valley. And two, section center enclosed by Valley Loop Road. And of course, three, Kuhuku side of the valley as well. So this is a lovely kind of sketch of everything of just like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, comp components of the conceptual plan that was funded by OHA uh, in 2012 uh, to uh, include some of these components. In the first increment that we are requesting now, the lands Malka of the Loop Road include two heiau, Kane Hekili and Kane Ame Kanaloa heiau, and could involve the following activities. Replacing the maintenance building at Kane Hekili heiau with a Polynesian design cultural retreat using the same footprint, Clearing alien vegetation and replaced with native plants and trees. Construction of a security building near the border water supply gate. Construction of two outdoor mm -hmm. teaching uh, halal shelters, locations not yet identified. Clearing an area to establish halal hula planting sites adjacent to the security building. Clearing an area for ibi kupuna dry burials between the two heiau. Rehabilitation and restoration of the loop road for access to sites identifying utility options for the first increment and establishing a 24 seven security program. In the second increment, if we get through this first one, the lands within the loop road, which is the center area, include the large transmitter building that you can see from the freeway H3 and the amphitheater 
that's located in the Pico of the Valley and could include the following activities. Rehabilitation and conversion of the large transmitter building into a museum and cultural center. Clearing invasives throughout the area and planting native plants and trees. Expanding the parking area with grass crete. Planting grass makai of the large building and around the amphitheater. Constructing a hula mound makai of the large building for cultural activities. Possibly constructing a meeting hall somewhere in this area where feasible. Clearing and establishing a playing field for makahiki games and identifying and establishing utility options for the second increment. In the third increment, the lands on the Kahuku side of the valley are mostly filled with invasive species and a few vacant military buildings. In this area, we would hope to convert it to a Hawaiian forest again. Some ac activities would include replacing the invasive vegetation with native forests, focusing on rare Hawaiian trees and plants, and identifying alternative uses for the vacant buildings. Yes. And going back into the um, first increment, so in this first increment, um, if the lease or license is approved, we hope to achieve the following activities. One, um, replacing invasive species with native plants and trees. Two, replacing the maintenance building with a cultural retreat structure. Three, constructing a security building. And four, rehabilitating the loop road for safer access. And for those not familiar with the maintenance building, it's this guy in my background too. Yeah, mahalo. Projected funding resources. Okay. Um, it is our intention that the culture preserve will become completely self-sustaining once the major initiatives are completed. As we move toward that objective, we will pursue a variety of funding sources to support the preserve's development, <clears throat> included but not limited to grants, tours and cultural workshops, cultural retreats, government support, corporate support, donations, and other supportive course as well. Uh, we should also note that Kola Foundation recently signed a memorandum of agreement with a local company that will donate 3,000 native plants and trees to establish a Hawaiian forest in Haiku Valley and at other Vahipana throughout Ko'ola Pako. Mahalo. And some of our anticipated cost factors for the initial phase, as well as later stages, include but are not limited to the following. One, landscape ar a landscape architect to design first um, and eventually later stages for reforestation with native plants and trees, um, building restoration um, or construction. Um, this includes the cultural retreat, which is the current maintenance building as pictured here, um, the security building, um, the halal learning structures, the museum, which is the rehabilitation of the large transmitter building, um, as well as the hula mound. Um, the last being infrastructure, which includes the loop road rehabilitation um, to help access the various sites, water and wastewater restoration, as well as um, off-grid power. Mahalo. How will this culture preserve help the beneficiaries and our community? By having an active cultural and educational program operating in the Valley can help in the following ways. First, Developing the cultural preserve and having regular activities in the valley helps to protect the area from squatters, trespassers, and others engaged in vandalism and other illegal activity. Second, acknowledging and preserving the cultural and historic complex helps DHHL regain compliance with the historic preservation covenant required by the U.S. government upon the transfer of the property. Preserve, through preserving cultural sites directly benefits any waitlist or active Hawaiian homes leasey, as well as future generations of Native Hawaiian children who may not be able to live on Hawaiian homes, homelands, but who can visit the valley and learn Hawaiian history, cultural practices, and values. The area is easily accessible for teaching, stewardship, and will promote the workforce development, particularly for Kanaka Maoli. Many of the practitioners we have worked with our kupa aina to this ahupua as well. This culture preserve will strengthen the mana of Haiku Valley. Ivi kupuna, kalau hula, kahuna laau lapaau, all these areas perpetuating cultural practices of Native Hawaiians. Last but not least, preserving the mo'olelo and the mana of Haiku Valley is so important for our people and our community. 
So over the years, we have been blessed with the support and cuckoo of a variety of community, public, and private organizations. Um, these include, but are not limited to, the following. Um, the Ko'ola Poko Hawaiian Civic Club, which many of our Kupa Aina residents of our Moku, um, as well as from Kaneohe and He'e'ia, um, sit on. Um, the Windward Community College, which again, artist Eschenberg, um, the cha current chancellor is on our board. Um, all of our elected officials being council member Kia Aina, um, council member Matt Wire, as well as our um, representatives and senators. Um, the Royal Order of Kamehameha, um, the Hawaii Institute for Marine Biology, Pai Pai Ohe'ia and the He'ia NERS. Um, so those are all of our Makai partners that um, help with Aina restoration here in He'e'ia, so we would be the most Malka organization, so very fortunate to have their support um, as we restore our Ahupua'a, um, Historic Hawaii Foundation, the William Claude and Ma'e Ma'e Jones Ohana, as well as the Hidilata, um, which is uh, amazing. It's amazing to always work with them as this very appropriate, um, given all of our sites in Haipu Valley, as Ilani Vai shared earlier, um, have to do with healing. Um, and last um, but not least, um, the Hawaii Memorial Park as well. Yeah, mahalo. Okay, as part of our work to build our capacity and prepare ourselves for management of a cultural preserve, we formally adopted an, a number of policies and procedures. These include but are not limited to administration, cultural and community access protocols, security, and emergency procedures. Mahalo Mahelani. You have now heard something about our background, history, policies, and work towards establishing a cultural preserve in Haiku Valley. We would deeply appreciate your favorable consideration of our request for a long-term license from DHHL beneficiaries here in Ko'ola Poko, as well as on the Hawaiian Homes Commission. We are hopeful that our requests will be placed upon the commission's agenda soon for their consideration and approval. We hope you will also add your voice of support for this important grassroots community initiative. If approved, We'll proceed with the cultural preserve plans and hope those of you in this moku will join us in the work that embraces our kupuna kahiko and our wahikapu, while we also pursue ways to connect our people with the mana of haiku. Mahalo nui. Aloha um, and mahalo for that um, presentation. Um, awesome information. Um, at this time, um, now it's time for uh, folks that have been uh, listening in, or um, for our beneficiaries that have been listening in to provide us with um, your mana'o on the request, or if you have any questions you might have, um, either for Ko'o Foundation or the department, now is an opportunity to ask your questions. Again, um, there are two ways to uh, indicate to us that you want to um, uh, speak. Um, either you can type a question into the chat, you can raise your virtual hand, or um, you can raise your real hand and I will call upon you. And then um, lastly, I see some, some folks uh, joined the meeting a little bit later. If you don't mind, um, signing in to the meeting via the chat box if you can just type in your um, first and last name and whether or not you are a DHHL waitlist applicant, uh, lessee, or other. That will help us um, uh, keep track of who attended the meeting so that we can present that information to the Ohio Homes Commission um, when we provide a meeting summary to them. Okay. Um, I see that uh, Louis Noi Young would like to talk um, and um, you have trouble raising your hand, but thanks for letting me know in the chat uh, that you wanna talk. So um, you can unmute yourself and um, uh, the floor is yours. Oh, and um, uh, if you, Ilani, if you can um, stop sharing and then so we can see each other's faces. Okay, mahalo. Um, Lui Noi, um, you, you can um, um, share your thoughts. Aloha mai kako, ova o 
kata lili no yang aya au e noho nei ma loli i i luna loa ma lala pono i o haiku um, and as a beneficiary of the Department of Hawaiian Homelands and as a representative of some of the um, the neighbors it, that we share boundaries, we have a kuleana to each other. So I have some concerns about, um, first of all, I'd like to volunteer to join your planning committee so that I could be involved and give feedback to the community that are not beneficiaries of DHHL. However, we will be sharing this Aina. So um, some of it concerns would be like, what we do to mitigate our concerns? For example, uh, has there been a traffic study? Will you conduct a survey with the people who will be involved? Um, what will your daily capacity entail? Um, how will you address holidays? Like I, I'm former state Hawaiian immersion teacher. So state employee, I understand we close on certain holidays. However, there are people enthusiasts that of all ethnic backgrounds that would like to use this facility that will be non-homesteaders. So they may or may not come from all over the world, including from the other side of the island, which is Moanalua Valley, where they have a right to go and hike the mountain and oftentimes come down haiku stairs and find themselves wandering around in all the neighborhoods, including the cultural park. So those are some of the concerns. We too have suffered property damage. I have been, um, uh, I have been assaulted twice on my own property. I've had to go to court. I've had to, um, we, we had petitions given to the Board of Water Supply. And that those were some of the reasons why, and this is, this is not immediately connected to the cultural part, but because the fact that hikers will come all hours of the day, even when you close the park, even when it's Christmas, even when it's New Year's Eve, they want to see the sunrise, kealaula, they want to see the moon setting, you know, na po'opo'okala, you know, and, um, it is just taxing on the community. So, you know, when I come home, I, I like to have peace, but I can tell you every day there's dogs barking because I'm having trespassers. I've had people going through my yard. Um, I also live at the area where all of the suicides um, get um, removed from the, below the stairway or where all the people who get lost up on the mountains coming from Wanaloa and trying to come down, including the land you're speaking about, um, they get lost and the helicopter has to go and rescue them in those areas. So there's some concern about, you know, they tried having security guards, but security guards can't do anything. And then they had a police task force and the lieutenant was assaulted on while he was on duty with his team. Um, they've arrested a lot of people who do abetting. It's just, um, I would like to be on the committee that will be planning so that I can give feedback to the community about how um, the cultural park will mitigate many of um, our 30 year struggle. You know, being that we, we all have a kuleana to this community, myself as a homeowner and DHHL as the, the Luna of the Aina, um, but we have to be pono to each other and have consideration for, you know, um, the preservation, the preservation of the Aina, of, 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 of what is pono, and then what, happens in nature about people coming over from the Moanalua side, getting lost, getting lost on your property, getting lost on my property, or just not lost, but just don't care. Yeah, so um, 
I hope that I can be a part of your planning um, community, <laughs> your little uh, organization. And if you'd like, I will join the Ko'olau Poco Civic Club. I will do whatever I need to take to, you know, be a be pono with my aina and also help the members of my community, many of whom are Hawaiian as well, um, that since it will be used for non-homesteading, how will we control um, basically who goes in and out and at what hours do they go in and out? Thank you, mahalo. Mahalo. Mahalo, Linoi, for um, expressing your mana'o in such an eloquent and um, clear manner. Um, so we, I, I hear your concerns about the trespassing caused by um, other activities in the neighborhood and also your willingness to be a part of the solution. Um, so I guess um, some if Ko'ola Foundation, if someone wants to be a part of the um, planning and making sure that um, the activities that you folks are proposing um, can be helped to not only accomplish the goal of um, malama'aina up there, but also mitigate any unintentional consequences. How can someone um, um, who's interested in uh, participating get involved? I know you had the contact information on the last slide. Oh, you're on mute, sorry. We're gonna type it in the, in the, uh, in the chat. chat room. Okay, great. And then, oh, yeah, and then also just wanted to remind everyone that the meeting is recorded. So the contact information that was on the slide will also be on the meeting video um, if you ever need to go back to it, but it is also going to be provided in the chat. So thank you for that. Um, other um, other mana'o or questions? Um, that was an excellent mana'o, uh, really annoying. Uh, other other um, mana'o folks uh, want to share with us or ask questions at this time? Oh, come on, no be shy. This is a facilitator's worst nightmare when no one wants to. Um, jump in and get crickets. Positive. They can also say positive things too if they think anything is good. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, any, anyone um, want to talk? Or, or, or like Mama Helani, um suggested any positive uh, feedback, what you like. It doesn't always have to be concerns. It can also be positive feedback. I didn't mean to make it like you have to have a concern, but um, also, you know, feel free to type in the chat too. That That's a, another way to share your mana'o with us. Um, just to um, hands up. <laughs> Looks like George, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was just wondering. You know, on the, uh, you know, we don't want to take a position on on high good stairs, but we must just remember that there's I think three or four, four uh, uh, government agencies that are involved. So it's not just our our, our job; it's everybody's job, and we we have to work together to solve the problem. Oh. Yeah, the border water supply, the the, the DHHL, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, homeland, and the, the stuff. They're all, all part part of it. Has has to come together and try to find the solution for for everybody. That then everybody will find a way way to find a a, a good solution. Mahalo, George, for that mana'o. Um, I also see in the chat um, from Be Happy, um, just to summarize the comment. Um, thank you for the excellent presentation from the Ko'ola Foundation. Um, you folks reside on uh, Luluku. Sorry, I have problems with L words. I always say that get tongue tied. Um, my husband is one of the, is on the DHHL waitlist. Um, 
and thank you for inviting us. Thank you for that comment. Okay. Um, um, Ronald Lifty had his hand up. I don't know. If oh, I did not see that. Thank you. Ronald, uh, go ahead. Please unmute. You can unmute yourself. Here. Uh, he needs to unmute. I think he's muted. Oh, Ronald, uh, can you unmute yourself? Sorry, we can't hear you, but we can see your mouth moving. Ronald? Oh, there you go. Yeah, how's that, everybody? Aloha. Hello. Hello. Uh, good upside about it is we have peaceful land, um, beautiful koalas. That's, that's the upside of it for us. I mean, versus the last one was in Ever Beach. It wasn't so good about as much as it is good here. So. That's all we got to say. <laughs> it's not. It's a good piece of land, I think. That's not being used. Why not put some homes there? Oh, so is it is a question? Um, why does why isn't the department considering putting homes on this property? Is um, that your is that your question? Oh yeah. Oh. oh, okay. Um, there there are um three reasons why the department um isn't considering putting homes on the property. One is the cultural resources that are uh located on the property. There are couple heyao, um, other other um historic properties on the site. Uh, second reason, um, um the Ko'oa Foundation kind of covered it in their presentation. Uh, there is. Uh, history of military use in which they um, burnt fuel on the property. So there is some contamination on the property that probably wouldn't be suitable to put a house and have someone there 24 seven. And then the third one, um, which um, the department when it did some due diligence to see whether or not we could put homes um, in on it, um, we would have to invest uh, significant um, monies to upgrade the uh, sewer line in order yeah. to connect um, any homes up there to the existing uh, county sewer line. Or it's strictly um, um, farmland. Um, yeah, but uh, under the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, if we did give out a agriculture lease, a homestead mm -hmm. agriculture lease, um, the lessee um, does have the ability to put a home on their agriculture lease. Even if, even if it's an agriculture lease, they have the um, that they have the right to put a house on there. Um, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because my dad, he he sent he's he signed up for the ag land, the farm land. Oh, okay. You know, um, things, yeah. yeah, we we hope to have future meetings uh, when we start um, our ag homesteading development in Waimanago. Um, hopefully, oh. that will be in the next couple of years. But um, we will be opening up lands in Waimanao for um, egg homestead and also a residential homestead in Waimanao. Oh, so, right on, right on. Yeah, okay. so good, good you got our postcard. That means we can keep in touch with you. Okay. Um, and Thanks. when that when those meetings come, um, we'll send out similar postcards to those. On okay, the right on. Thank you. Thank you, Ronald. Thank you. Uh, Luino, you have your hand up again. Mahalo. So to piggyback on his thoughts about, you know, 60, 70 acres of ag land, that is, you know, and it's not being used for homesteaders. This is just a possibility, but like, just like it, there's all these land trades, why can't they do land trades like Waiahole Waikane? They have all these lease lands and they're pushing some of the Hawaiian poi um, growers, taro growers, they are losing their lease or whatnot. But, you know, if you did a land trade and I'm, I'm just an outsider looking at it, then you could put homes on 60 to 70 acres as opposed to letting all these non-homesteaders from all over the world just 
come with their different, uh, what is Pono to them might be not Pono to us. Um, and in the way the world is changing, um, while we do wanna open up unity and aloha and aloha is free and Hawaii is free, um, maybe there could be some kind of land trade where the state will take over that kuleana and then we get 60 to 70 acres in Waiahole and we get to build homes for the Hawaiian people. It's just a thought because I live here and I know it's, it's, it's valuable land and I feel like I want to see my Hawaiian people have have the the land use for building homes. Mahalo. Mahalo, really know for that um, manao. And actually, that's a good uh, manao. The department has explored trying to trade um, or exchange uh, these lands with other LE trust. Um, the department approached uh, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to see if um, OHA wanted to take on the kuleana of uh, steward stewarding these lands for um, the cultural purposes that um, Ko'oha Foundation wanted to do. Unfortunately, um, OHA um, um, just did not um, see the see an opportunity, um, it, the timing wasn't right for them to take on the land. Um, we also approached Kamehameha schools to see if um, they wanted to uh, take the property in exchange for some other lands that they might possess that might be better suited for homesteading. Um, because, you know, these were once Kamehameha schools lands, um, you know, they own the entire ahupua of Heia, but unfortunately, um, again, the, the timing wasn't right for them to um, uh, feel comfortable about uh, entering into a land exchange with the department. So um, we, we have explored trying to exchange these lands um, for lands better suited for homesteading, but um, it's an opportunity that we can still explore, um, but um, we just haven't find we haven't found a, a partner in order to do that. Um, Mahelani, you had your hand up. Yes, um, I I know that one of the, several of the uh, past chairs of the Hawaiian Homes Commission have tried to exchange land that that can be developed into homesteads for land in Haiku. Land in Haiku is conservation and preservation land, and if you have land that can be developed for housing. Why would you exchange it for land that can't be developed? And basically conservation and preservation land is very hard to develop because there's many state regulations that control developments in that area. So that's probably one reason why they haven't found anybody who wants to exchange land with Haiku because it's hard to develop land on conservation and preservation land. If you have land that's valuable that you can build houses on, um, you're not gonna give it up for land that you can't do anything. That's what we've learned. Thank you. Um, other questions, comments? Um, good conversation so far, everyone. Um, do you know, is your hand up again or you just forgot to take it down? Okay, you took it down, okay, thanks. Um, other other folks? Okay, I, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. So if if you folks um, just wanna, you know, this is your opportunity to um, share your mana'o, but you know, again, like if you're like me and you, you naturally shy, um, you don't have to share right now, but I think it's a good segue to um, the next steps. So, um, I think everyone can see my screen. So the next steps um, in our in the department's beneficiary consultation process, um, and this is our standard um, process when we do consultation. We understand that not everyone can make it to a meeting on a particular day at a particular time because they have other either work obligations or family obligations. So we do provide. Um, an extra period of time for people to um, share their mana'o on um, 
the subject being consulted upon. So in this instance, um, we do have a 30 day uh, comment period from okay. April 25th, which is tonight to May 25th. Um, so, you know, if you think of other um, comments, ideas, questions that you might have, um, you still have an additional opportunity to share that mana'o. Um, and you can send those comments uh, to dhhl.planning at hawaii.gov. Also, if you know of other beneficiaries who wanted to attend tonight's meeting, but just were unable to because they had conflicts tonight, um, you can let them know that they still have an opportunity to provide us with their um, written comments uh, via email by submitting um, it to the address on the screen. Um, yeah, so even though you might not have anything else to say this evening, you do have an additional opportunity to share your uh, comments with us. Um, and then after the 30 day comment period, after May 25th, uh, then the department will present the uh, beneficiary consultation report, which is just a report that summarizes all of the comments that we received uh, during this consultation process on the subject matter. Uh, so we will present a summary of that uh, to the Hawaiian Homes Commission, along with the meeting notes and along with a link to tonight's uh, meeting video so that the commissioners can have all of that information um, before them on um, beneficiary um, requests, I'm sorry, not requests, beneficiary comments. Um, and either at, so that will be presented to the commission at the June commission meeting. Um, either at the June commission meeting or the July commission meeting is when uh, DHHL staff will um, present um, a request to the commission on behalf of the Ko'ola Foundation on their land use request. Um, um, for a initial period of right of entry. And then after that, um, once they complete their due diligence, uh, a long-term uh, lease or license. So the staff will present a co beneficiary consultation report to the commission in June, either at the same June commission meeting or the July commission meeting. Uh, staff will also uh, present a request uh, to the commission on seeking approval on the Ko'ola Foundation's uh, land use request. Andrew, so, may I add that um, mm -hmm. the project webpage that you mentioned earlier? Oh, yes, On the yes. DHL website. So I cool. um, put the website address into the chat. Thank you so much, Carlene. I forgot about that. So thank you for covering sure. that. So um, yeah, the project website is on, sorry, the land use request from the Ko'ola Foundation is on the department's website. It's the same website that you folks utilized uh, to access tonight's meeting. Uh, we'll put the meeting notes and the meeting video on the same um, website. And thank you, Perlene, for putting the website address in the chat. Okay, um, last call. Any last thoughts from um, anyone? Okay. Um, Thank you for uh, facilitating tonight, and we're grateful to everyone who came and offered their manao. It's really important to know early in the process what the problems are and try to resolve it before it goes too far. Okay. Uh, Lino, you had your hand up. So, do I just uh, keep in touch with Shelly regarding my um, my volunteer service? to be involved with your planning um, so that I can let the other people and the neighbors know they may or may not be at this meeting. They may not be a, 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 a DHHL beneficiary, but I would like to give them a voice. And I would like to be, have a voice as well in your planning since I live here. I live at the very top of the mountain. So do I just keep in touch with Shelly and how will I know um, if I'm able to be involved? Thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, Ko'olau Foundation, um, if... We did leave our contact info, ko'olaufoundation at gmail.com. 
And that's how you can find out when our volunteer work days are and uh, when we ever have meeting sessions. We don't have meetings every month, but we do have regular meetings of the board. So you can talk story with us. We can you know, deal with the issues that you brought up and maybe a subcommittee of the board can help you with that. Um, just for the purpose of this meeting, um, I had put in the chat a different email. Um, that is Mahilani's direct email for the purpose of this meeting. And that is inside of the chat there as well. And I will also put the other ones that she has put in as well. Uh, she has just said as well too. Koala Foundation at Gmail. Mm -hmm. So do you have that information, Illinois? Um, it's it's in the chat. Um, that's how that's how you can um, stay involved with the um, the project and the land use request. And then, oh, thank you, he, he, Lenny, for um, putting in the email address again. Um, just want to make sure you have that, really, really Um While Shelly is always um, happy to um, provide a point of contact at the department, um, the real planning work, the more detailed planning work is uh, going to be with the Kowal Foundation. If you, um, yeah, so if you want to be um, involved, um, they put their contact information in the chat. Okay, I hope that um, answered your question. Okay. Um, um, Malama Pono 744 um, at AOL.com is my Helene's uh, direct email. So if you had any direct questions or comments to her as well too. Okay, um, if there is nothing else from anyone, um, last call. Okay, if there's nothing else from anyone, um, mahalo nui everyone for taking the time um, with to join us this evening. And um, we really appreciate your mana'o and um, sharing this uh, space with us. Um, again, um, Hope everyone has a good, good night. Um, every all the information from tonight's meeting will be on the department's website, uh, where you and where you access the meeting on Zoom. Okay. Um, aloha, everyone. Aloha, mahalo nui. Mahalo, thank you. Mahalo. Aloha, mahalo. Andrew wanted to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well. Thank you very much, Andrew, everybody. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks for joining us so from so far away. <laughs> Can't miss it. Night, Jesse. Um, yeah, so just real fast. Um, so we'll do the meeting notes for tonight's meeting, um, collect any comments that might come our way, um, and then pre prepare the report to the commission. Um, Perlene and I were talking earlier, we, we thought it might be a good idea for you folks to um, attend the June commission meeting um, and kind of just maybe not walk through your entire presentation, but just kind of summarize you know, what you, your, your land use request. Um, the June commission meeting is, it got rescheduled. Um, I think it's the last, I think now it's the last week of June. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll email you that information. Okay. I will have um, the slide show emailed to you by midnight. Oh, okay. All right. Like, okay. I was tweaking one little thing. I was making it work better. T tomorrow morning is fine too. Okay, cool. But you will have it. You will have it. Okay. All right. Um, does she have your email, direct email? Yes. Okay. She does. Cool. Yes. Why don't you get it now since you're... Oh, okay. Andrew, what um, is it? I'll, I'll... Is it easier if I type it in the chat? Sure. Okay. Oh, it's andrew.h.joy at hawaii.gov. And Andrew, you're correct. Um, they are 
message said that it's a week later on June 26 and 27. Okay. And then um, I'm not sure if you were, if you still had your headset on, but Mahelani shared that they do have a May 2nd meeting with Kali. With in who? person. With Kali with, Watson. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's it then, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. on the compliance issues. Okay, did I, 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 I know I told you I would send you our exemption list. I think I might have forgotten to do that. Send that to um, uh, George, because George is working on that. Okay, all right. I'll copy you too, but just, just in case. Okay. Thank all right, I, yeah, I think that's it then. Okay, okay. we'll see you, have Great. a nice night. Okay, Thank you. you too. Thank you. Bye. Uh -huh.